Good afternoon. Uh, today I want to share the story of how the Cape Cod Commission in Massachusetts has been using Esri 3D technology to support their planning work. The Commission is a regional planning agency who support their local partners uh, to ensure that there's effective and consistent planning across the Cape. And this past year I've had the great pleasure of working with the staff there uh, and it's really the vision and hard work of folks like Paul, Christy, Ann and many others who made this presentation possible. Uh, it's very much their story and their success. So the Commission's stated goal is to keep a special place special. And if you've ever been to Cape Cod, you know what a beautiful place it is. There's this gorgeous natural scenery, uh, that classic historic Cape Cod uh, New England architecture, and the culture is very much married to the sea. And so in supporting their effective planning, uh, the Commission has been a long and progressive user of GIS with data and software supporting their many projects. In fact, last year, Paul uh, Nidwicki, for uh, the director, uh, was here presenting their innovative uh, use of GIS for wastewater management. This past year they had a very ambitious 3D project uh, whose goals were to first create a 3D base map of the entire Cape and this was over a quarter million individual buildings and then to develop a 3D modeling tool that would allow them to uh, dynamically create 3D models in the base map to be able to draw them and then report in real time back on some key uh, impact metrics and then to be able to do all of this within their ArcGIS uh, platform. And so we at Bergman were fortunate enough to win the contract and today I want to show uh, a little bit about how the solution uh, was developed and how it was used uh, for some really cool uh, projects uh, on the Cape that the Commission um, has been leading. So what we've been looking at here is a flyover, flyover of Cape Cod and some of those uh, 260,000 individual GIS building models. And we know GIS is a data-driven technology, and so at the foundation of this planning solution is a robust 3D base map. Now the majority of these buildings were created with a simple city engine rule. We took the building footprint uh, from their planimetric data and then a LiDAR height attribute and created uh, a representative structure. You know, this isn't exactly uh, the same as the building that sits in that location, but it's similar enough to define what's there, and we really tried to capture that uh, architectural uh, quality of the, of the classic Cape House. The Commission also purchased accurately modeled 3D buildings for their main study areas from PLW, who's a pictometry partner. Um, but, you know, the project team recognized that these models needed to be more than just a, a pretty picture. Uh, they needed to participate in analysis. So each model was populated with key performance measures to create an as-is baseline of existing conditions. And so as multi-patch features, uh, they behave very much like a traditional 2D layer. Uh, we have an attribute table that we were able to calculate with established impact variables for the different land use types on the Cape. And then we took those formulas and applied them to, to all of the models. The project team also added to the 3D base map by interpreting the zoning code for priority development areas uh, that we uh, converted into 3D physical forms. So the front, side, and back setbacks along with height attributes from the zoning code were turned into these 3D volumes. And these are used to uh, illustrate how physical parcels, um, the physical constraints on the parcel. So with an attributed 3D base map, uh, the Commission had the data and now they needed a tool. So we developed an add-in for ArcGIS Pro that we're calling Bergman Impact 3D. It offers real-time 3D modeling, uh, has very configurable impact measures, there's a reporting interface and a dashboard, and of course it all works within the ArcGIS platform. So let me take you on a quick tour. Impact 3D allows a user to draw a building footprint on a parcel and to find its physical parameters, both its size and its symbology. And then it reports site values like square footage, FAR, available parking, and lot coverage. It also allows a user to define how space will be used, selecting from a, a list of user-defined space types. So here we're assigning a mix of uses. And then we can immediately report out the expected impacts for this building uh, for those parameters most uh, important to the use case here. The types of space and associated impacts are all defined by the users. So we just have a simple lookup table here where you can come in and create a new space type as well as a new impact uh, and then create variables for space 
uh, to apply to buildings. And then finally we can report on a plan's total impacts. Here we've selected a, a proposed and existing building area in the project um, area and we can report out in this dashboard view the total and then combine impacts uh, for the selected set. So we delivered the data and tools at the end of this past summer and we're really excited to see how much uh, the Cape Cod Commission has accomplished. Um, and so what I thought I'd do is show you three different planning projects where they were able to use uh, ArcGIS and Impact 3D to, to as a significant aid uh, to visualize, analyze, and then ultimately share their great work. So the first uh, is Cape Town Plaza. Uh, and this is a classic redevelopment scenario we see all across America. So just outside of, uh, downtown Hyannis is a struggling strip mall. It's located across from the, the one regional mall. And uh, what we can see is there's a huge underutilized parking lot. So a developer has submitted a proposal for the site. And you might be familiar with this format. It's kind of a simple graphic map showing uh, how the space uh, would be used uh, and some supporting imagery trying to show architectural style and scale. So to evaluate this proposal, uh, the Commission uh, brought the plan into uh, the GIS and then used Impact 3D to uh, digitize each of the buildings. <clears throat> These multi-patch buildings were then attributed with their space types uh, to calculate each individual score. But then by selecting the entire uh, proposed development uh, and using the reporting tool, uh, the planners had a quick estimation of the expected impacts uh, of this proposal. And then of course we can uh, compare these to the existing baseline, uh, both in terms of attributes but also looking at side-by-side uh, -side views here. And then we can just quickly compare the two expected impacts. So this is you know, a very quick and easy way to begin a conversation with the developer about you know, expectations and opportunities to really make sure that plan maximizes and, and meets community goals. Uh, the second project is called Mashpee Commons. Uh, and this is really, we think, a powerful example of how 3D GIS can support uh, a large development uh, review. So Mashpee Commons is a new urbanism and development. And while privately owned, it's really been designed to be a, a public walkable space. It has uh, that classic New England architecture and a layout that make, very much feels like a place. Uh, it's a large draw for tourists and residents with a mix of commercial spaces. Um, and it's very integrated into the, into the community. Uh, they sponsor large holiday parades and they get hundreds of participants. Uh, this is very much a, a robust community asset. And now the developers want to expand on it significantly. So uh, here we can see that there are thousands of, of proposed square feet of residential, mixed use, and commercial space. Uh, this is no small project. There'll be a significant change to the community, so the commission has been very intimately involved with the development team, working to ensure that community needs and standards are being addressed. And ArcGIS Pro helps us understand this development in many ways. There's the visualization of scale and density, uh, but also we can see that there's going to be a huge infrastructure investment for this project uh, with traffic engineering and then of course water and sewer uh, needs. And these need to be quantified. So how do we understand what those impacts might be? So the Commission's multidisciplinary staff created this 3D representation of the uh, developer's plan that came in CAD and then assigned the si uh, size and then space use for each building model. And then once complete, they were quickly able to run analysis on these key metrics. And what we can see is a huge jump in expected population, in water consumption, traffic. Um, these all need to, needed to be understood and accounted for. So by having the visualizations and these impact measures early in the development process, all the stakeholders can benefit. The community can understand the scale and impacts uh, of the concept early on. And then this allows the developer to modify the plan and address these concerns early, before they've begun expensive design work. And now, importantly, the planning office has a tool to quickly reflect and then test each revision and iteration of this plan as it moves towards approval, continually uh, updating it. So we think this is a great example of how uh, Esri 3D GIS can really support uh, a development review process. And so while the two prior examples we showed uh, how the Commission could quickly uh, build and test a developer-driven plan, 
Uh, now I want to show uh, a concept created in-house by the commission to ser serve as a, a, a guide for their community partner of Hyannis. And really the purpose of this project was to start as a, a, a place to begin a conversation on how smart redevelopment with targeted higher density can really address many of the needs of the town. Hyannis is a historic seaside community. Uh, it has an economy that's supported by tourism and local businesses. It's a transportation gateway to the outer islands. But the immediate need is for more affordable housing, uh, year-round housing, to support those employees of the local businesses. Uh, because the problem is they are simply um, priced out from the summer rentals. So the commission focused on East Hyannis as a target location for redevelopment. It's close to the historic downtown, to the harbor, and then to the regional hospital, which is a major employer. And as you can see, the project area is sparsely developed with significant surface parking. So what I want to show now is three redevelopment scenarios the commission created to start the conversation with the community on how redevelopment could uh, affect these pressing, pressing needs. So in the first scenario, uh, the commission selected parcels that were for sale or in disrepair and used those as candidates for redevelopment. And we see them here in purple. This scenario looked to build new residential housing that matched the current building scale while preserving that historic sea captain uh, look and feel. <clears throat> so the team used Impact 3D to digitize the existing footprints and create two-story residential models. As uh, elements now of the 3D base map, we can get a sense of the scale of these buildings as we zoom around as and see how they fit in the neighborhood. But after review, uh, the analysis, analysis showed that the uh, scenario's impacts are quite slight. And most importantly, it, it did not meet the minimum housing needs of the major employers. So in the second scenario, uh, we're looking at those same um, targeted underperforming for sale properties, but look to really maximize uh, residential square feet footage by building to the allowable zoning limits and also accommodating all the parking on site. So the GIS staff used Impact 3D to digitize new three-story building footprints that accommodate parking. And to confirm parking, uh, the massing tool gives us an estimated parking remaining on the parcel lot, uh, while the impact report shows uh, the building's expected parking generation based on how it's used. And of course, we can visualize these simple massings in the context of surrounding neighborhood to help understand their size and density. And so when we sum up these um, proposed and existing buildings uh, in our study area, we can see that actually we are uh, adding enough housing to meet the immediate needs of those local employers. So we can say this plan works for that specific goal of more housing. But the goal of these redevelopment concept plans is really to help the community think big about Hyannis, uh, to go beyond just a satisfying immediate needs and starting discussions on how a concentrated effort on redevelopment can support longer term goals through a focused plan rather than perhaps single isolated one-off planning activities addressing one single need at a time. So let me show you the Commission's third scenario that uses density and physical connections to create a community that really can support the longer term economic, social, and sustainability goals of Hyannis. So this third scenario is a full redesign of the plan's focus area. First, it creates the, recreates the historic street grid and lever to leverage those in underutilized interior parcels. There is a proposed public green space and two large parking ramps. And then there's a multi-use path that threads through the whole neighborhood. And <clears throat> this helps connect the hospital and ferry parking to the nearby historic downtown and harbor. Uh, this is very much a walkable community. And we can see there's significantly more density in square footage. But while the buildings are more tightly clustered, they're designed to have footprints similar to the existing stock. There's a focus on adding many additional uh, commercial spaces here facing Main Street and expanding on the existing uh, commercial corridor to help build on the tourist economy. And the plan has many new mixed-use buildings uh, with retail, restaurant, and office space to support residential services and visitor needs. And here we can see the overall square footage uh, by type so we get a sense of the volume of space. When we report on the plan's community effects, uh, we can see there's a tremendous gain in housing and jobs. This vision of uh, New Hyannis is exciting, it's inspiring, 
And I think we can safely say that 3D GIS helps illustrate and convey this plan in a way that makes the vision of a new Hyannis come to life so that it can be understood from many perspectives. And while plan review and plan development uh, are important responsibilities of the planning office, it's just as, as important to educate and engage the broader community on these projects. And here's where we see uh, the ArcGIS platform as being very exciting. Uh, all the interactive visualizations, we can uh, publish these over the web as interactive 3D scenes. So we're able to take data from ArcGIS Pro, put it into ArcGIS Online web scenes, and integrate them into story maps to really engage the broader public. So the Commission can now share these plans uh, with descriptive text and supporting images to really tell the story of how each scenario can benefit uh, the community. And now stakeholders can place themselves right in the map and understand what a development will look like from their home, from their neighborhood, or in their downtown. Uh, we think this is very powerful and it's very easy. So next steps, we're all learning from these projects. Uh, one of the big recognitions is the need for better plan data from the developers to help streamline the scenarios uh, creation. Uh, we know developers are already using 3D technologies for many of their concept designs, so it's not unreasonable to expect them to uh, have formats that can be easily imported into the base map. Because ArcGIS Pro has a robust geoprocessing toolkit, uh, there's a lot of potential to migrate existing workflows and to create new uh, workflows within the base map. Um, you know, this is very much a powerful desktop GIS. And then with uh, Impact 3D, we recognize that uh, the massing models and their texturing uh, can be refined to better reflect place type architecture as a plan moves from that uh, high level concept uh, to more formalized uh, version uh, where form and character are a little more important. So I think we can all agree uh, the creative staff here at the Cape Cod Commission have really done some fantastic work here. Uh, it's really been a privilege to be their partner. And most importantly, they've really proven that 3D GIS is a viable and effective framework to quickly develop, to view, report, and share planning work. Uh, with a robust 3D base map and tools like Impact 3D, uh, we really feel the planning community has a platform now to be very effective in designing those smart and sustainable communities of the future. Thank you.